ఇంటర్మీడియట్ విద్యా రంగంలో అగ్రగామి మన ఎన్ఎస్ఆర్ ఇంపల్స్ ఎడ్యుకేషన్ ఇన్స్టిట్యూషన్ ఐఐటి జేఏఐ విద్యా సంస్థ ఎన్ఎస్ఆర్ ఇంపల్స్ now let us study for the last uh, class videos if you observe we studied about macro elements and we studied about micro elements so if you look at macro elements we discussed very clearly macro elements which we required in large quantity for the plant that's why they are called macro elements and some of the mineral nutrients are referred as micronutrients because plant requires them in very very less quantity so macro and micro nutrients now let us see as we already have discussed what is the role of some of the elements like nitrogen phosphorus zinc iron calcium and all that uh, just table was written for the last class don't don't worry once again we'll talk about that table uh, most commonly most frequently connecting to different topics of different chapters right now let's continue with the next topic role of essential elements so some of the nutrients are elements are most essential for the plants so we know all essential elements we studied macro elements and micro elements now very importantly here we are going to discuss what is called critical concentration if the question arises how much element is required for the plant so if you look at the quantity how much quantity of element required for the plan quantity when you talk here very important we are going to discuss about a thing called critical concentration very very importantly we are going to discuss what is called a critical concentration now what is this critical concentration let us define this critical concentration as the concentration of an element below which the plant growth retards below which the plant growth retards so whenever sufficient amount of element is needed for example i say okay zinc is required in 10 mg 10 mg is a required quantity of the zinc for the plant. Okay. For example, a plant requires minimum quantity of the zinc required by the plant is 10 mg. Suppose if the concentration of element below which below this 10 mg of zinc is supplied, then what happens? That retards the growth. That means the growth phenomena stops. That causes influence on growth that retards the growth phenomenon so here the concentration of element below which the plant growth retards then it is called as what a critical concentration so this is a total definition for critical concentration so here we take this is a total definition for critical concentration so for the zinc this 10 mg is a critical concentration for the zinc required quantity is 10 mg 10 mg is the minimum concentration if plant uh, supplied with 8 mg 5 mg that means below this critical concentration critical concentration is 10 mg for zinc if it supplied below critical concentration below 10 mg when definitely it causes retardation on growth so it causes impact on the growth mechanism then that particular concentration of an element it's said to be critical concentration nothing this is a concentration called critical concentration why it's called critical means most required concentration below with uh, below 10 mg of zinc if less milligrams of zinc is supplied then that definitely causes impact on the plant that means minimum required is 10 milligrams minimum required means most essential requirement is 10 milligrams that concentration is called critical concentration again i repeat it's nothing but concentration of an element below which the plant growth retards okay so here if you take 
this critical concentration for example if you take what happens if the concentration of element below critical concentration that leads to deficiency symptom suppose if element is if element is below critical concentration below critical concentration meaning what here required is 10 milligrams okay but uh, below less than 10 milligrams less than 10 milligrams concentration is uh, element is supplied then what happens then that leads to deficiency symptoms that leads to deficiency symptoms okay if element is below critical concentration then that leads to deficiency symptoms what is deficiency plant will say that yes i am in need of i am deficiency of so and so element meaning i am in need of so and so element how plant will express in the form of symptoms then the symptoms are called deficiency symptoms then suppose if the element is if the element is above critical concentration above critical concentration then that causes that causes toxicity symptoms that causes what toxicity symptoms what's the meaning of this what's the meaning of this if the element is below the critical concentration required is 10 mg less than that below critical concentration if it is observed that causes deficiency symptoms now what is the critical concentration 10 mg critical concentration means most needed concentration if the element is supplied with more than 10 mg more than 10 mg means excess amount of zinc excess amount of the element excess means more if the element is above critical concentration then that element itself becomes toxic to the plant then it expresses what toxicity symptoms see the element is required in certain concentration that concentration what we call critical concentration plant don't want to take less than that concentration and don't want to take above that concentration what happens if the plant takes the element less than critical concentration it says i am in need of some more quantity of the element by expressing deficiency symptoms okay i repeat so if the element is below critical concentration that leads to deficiency symptoms suppose if the element is above critical concentration required is 10 milligrams but the plant is supplied with more excess quantity of zinc more than critical concentration more than 10 milligrams that itself becomes toxic to the plant then plant says no 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 i don't want more concentration of the zinc zinc got accumulated in plant so that zinc itself will become toxic to the plant then plant says i am in toxic effect of zinc protect me by showing some appearance of the external characters it shows some symptoms which we call them toxicity symptoms so what you need to understand below critical concentration leads to deficiency symptoms above critical concentration leads to toxicity symptoms we will discuss about toxicity symptoms later let us concentrate first on deficiency symptoms now let us study our topic what is the topic we need to discuss now deficiency symptoms so if you take the deficiency symptoms here what happens how do you identify the plant is in deficiency of some element for example same example i'll take zinc required critical concentration is 10 milligram maybe the plant is having only 3 milligrams of zinc that is less than critical concentration then how plant expresses the deficiency symptoms how plant shows deficiency symptoms most commonly by morphological changes so immediately you can see some external changes that's nothing but what we call morphological changes so when morphological changes are there then you need to understand it may be because of deficiency of so and so 
element then apart from this these ds means what i am writing all points related to deficiency symptoms now these deficiency symptoms vary from element to element e for element what i am writing here e for element element is nothing but more if manganese showing one type of deficiency symptoms then zinc may be showing another deficiency symptoms deficiency symptoms are not same for all elements every element is specific in showing some deficiency symptoms and those deficiency symptoms are different from other element called manganese or lignite so they vary from element to element so if if element is supplied to the plant whatever the deficient element is immediately if you supply if you understand the language of the plant if you see that and if you do the research if you come to know this may be because of deficiency of zinc if you identify if you supply the element what is been deficient then definitely deficiency symptoms disappears deficiency symptoms disappears so if you understand the language of the plant and whatever is deficient if you supply that element then that definitely leads to deficiency symptoms disappears right apart from this here the deficiency symptoms are different uh, for plant part by same element by same element what's the meaning of this deficiency symptoms are different for plant parts by same element the element what is deficient for example you take zinc zinc the deficiency symptom what it shown on the leaf is different from zinc deficiency what is shown on the root that is different from deficiency of zinc on shoot is different so every part may not get affected by same deficiency symptoms the deficiency symptoms different for all part parts by same element meaning zinc causes one impact on root the same zinc causes different impact on leaf the same zinc causes different impact on shoot or root so these are the things which we need to remember about deficiency symptoms now if you take the plant overall on the plant so here we have there are two possibilities what are the two possibilities we say maybe the deficiency symptoms first appears on older parts of the plant so i write here deficiency symptoms ds means deficiency symptoms deficiency symptoms in some cases first appears in older parts of the plant older parts of the plant very important some cases in some elements where deficiency symptoms first appears in young parts of the plant right now let us get the clarity here what exactly is the meaning of this here deficiency symptoms first appear in older parts of the plant means some elements they show deficiency symptoms in the old plant part in some cases deficient symptoms first appear in the young parts of the plant so how it varies let us see very clearly now now if you take older parts of the plant this is due to actively mobilizing elements actively mobilized elements what's the meaning of actively mobilized elements they keep moving from one place to other place they are called actively mobilized elements so when actively mobilized elements are there what happens as soon as mature part is there from the mature part from the old part immediately they get transported to young part so what happens in this case suppose if you take this is a branch this is the old part so all the nutrients what are present here all the nutrients are highly mobilized what's the meaning of mobilized here they keep moving from one place to other place so they go to what young part here young leaf is forming so they go to young part of it when all got shifted to young part 
now this shows what is called deficiency symptom so this shows what happens here deficiency symptom try to understand when old part get sufficient amount of nutrients but these are actively mobilizing immediately they'll make a move to young part young part will get sufficient amount of nutrients older part will become empty so in this case old part shows deficiency symptoms so which are those actively mobilizing elements very very important so let us remember nitrogen and phosphorus along with that magnesium so what you have to remember for these three elements these three elements they first show deficiency symptoms in senescent leaves senescent yeah senescent leaves what's the meaning of senescent leaves older leaves aged leaves older parts mature parts what happening here nitrogen phosphorus magnesium they show deficient symptoms in the older leaves senescent leaves older parts of the plant okay so why all this get actively mobilized to the younger parts of the plant so what are they very importantly nitrogen phosphorus magnesium very very important questions will come guys listen carefully npk what for you have to remember actively mobilized elements and these deficient symptoms first appears in senescent leaves older leaves then what else happens here now if you look at in this case in older parts of the plant if you look at suppose nutrients are not available then what happens in older parts of the plant for example i'll say older part or mature regions which are completely developed in this mature regions what happens here is biomolecules are get broken down biomolecules are broken down and releases nutrients and these nutrients get transported to younger parts of the plant so as a result what happened in parts of the plant as a result what happens younger parts of the plants are highly nutritional here they all will get accumulated and highly nutritional older parts of the plant will become empty and deficient symptoms first appears in older parts of the plant guys i say textual uh, lines are very very important maybe it's a very simple point for you all that suppose nutrients are not supplied no water supply is there then how nutrients will get transported so here older or mature regions inside the mature regions what are present we all know biomolecules and these biomolecules broken down to produce what nutrients and these nutrients will get uh, transported to younger parts when all become translated what happens to younger parts they all become empty then the deficient symptoms first tends to appear in older parts of the plant very very important you have to remember npm nitrogen phosphorus magnesium deficient symptoms first appears in senescent leaves this is one of the aspect let us talk first appears in older parts let us see the second part what is that deficient symptoms first appears in younger parts of the plant why in younger parts of the plant let us take very importantly here calcium and sulfur what are the two important elements calcium and sulfur this calcium and sulfur are structural parts of the cell structural part of cell and plant parts structural part of plant parts or structural part of the cell so here these calcium and sulfur what you find here they are immobilized elements very very important they are immobilized elements what's the meaning of immobilized means once they get absorbed into older parts so once they get absorbed into older parts from the older part they cannot they cannot transport to younger parts they cannot transport to younger parts okay from the older part they cannot transport to younger parts what's the meaning of this so here in this case if you make the plant so this is the old part 
here all nutrients got absorbed then they are immobilized means they cannot get transported to younger parts then younger parts will the one which show deficiency symptoms so here no nutrients in the younger part why because once nutrients are completely absorbed in the older parts no translocation what is the reason here two things are very very important what are the two things here mobilized elements very very important here they are immobilized elements because of mobilized elements deficiency symptoms first appears where older parts of the plant because of immobilized elements deficiency symptoms appears where in the younger parts of the plant these two guys you should be very very careful second most important point very important notified point you need to remember examples what are actively mobilized elements nitrogen phosphorus and magnesium where do they appear deficient symptoms in the older parts of the plant what are the examples for actively uh, immobilized elements calcium and sulfur where the deficient symptoms first appears in the younger parts of the plant very 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 important so guys i repeat again so if you look at when element is below critical concentration it's said to be deficient symptoms how do the deficient symptoms occurs with the morphological changes and they always vary from element to element if the deficiency element is supplied then deficient symptoms disappears then deficient symptoms different for different plant parts by the same element what are the deficiency symptoms in some plants first appears in older parts of the plant in some plants it appears in younger parts of the plant what is the reason here in older parts it appears it's because of what actively mobilized elements what are actively mobilized elements nitrogen phosphorus and magnesium and these are said to be actively mobilized they keep moving to younger parts as a result older parts mature parts are the ones which show deficiency symptoms nitrogen phosphorus magnesium show deficiency symptoms in senescent leaves what are senescent leaves aged leaves right next is deficiency symptoms first appears in younger parts of the plant it due to immobilized elements most importantly you have to remember calcium and sulfur because they are structural parts of the cell but older parts they cannot get transport calcium and sulfur to the younger parts as a result what happens deficient symptoms first tend to appear in the younger parts of the plant we are still in deficient symptoms we haven't entered into toxic new symptoms let us continue further even with the part of deficiency symptoms so far where the deficient symptoms appears means older younger parts but what are deficient symptoms what kind of deficient symptoms appears in the plant let's continue with what is called still we are in deficiency symptoms now let's continue with the deficient symptoms now we just have studied deficient symptoms may appear in older parts of the plant or may appear in younger parts of the plant so how they appear what are deficient symptoms what are the different type of common deficiency symptoms now let us continue with that now in plants most commonly we find what is called as chlorosis most commonly we find what is called as chlorosis chlorosis is nothing but discoloration of chlorophyll discoloration of very important pigment called chlorophyll okay the chlorophyll pigment will get discolored there is a discoloration of chlorophyll you know chlorophyll is the most an important pigment present in green parts of the plant when it get discolored when it get the dae what you call when it becomes inactive when it get destroyed when chlorophyll pigment got destroyed when it becomes non functional then that leads to discoloration of chlorophyll as a result of discoloration of chlorophyll most commonly we find yellowing of leaves most commonly we find what yellowing of leaves we can see yellowing of leaves right this may be most commonly this chlorosis is due to due to a deficiency of elements deficiency of which elements let us take nitrogen sulfur potassium 
magnesium manganese zinc and calcium along with the even iron okay so here chlorosis can be seen in the leaves sometimes green color part of the leaf can convert into yellow okay so here and there you can see yellow patches on the leaf here and there you can see there is a discoloration of chlorophyll and as a result you can see yellowing of leaves it is called chlorosis it is one of the deficiency symptoms chlorosis occurs due to what elements so chlorosis is due to deficiency of elements such as important to remember nitrogen sulfur uh, potassium manganese ma uh, zinc calcium as well as iron okay then another important one is this is one aspect second one is necrosis necrosis is nothing but death of tissue here and there on the plant parts you can see brown color formation of the plant parts why there is a brown color formation of the plant parts it is because of death of tissue there the tissue may get damaged and that part is called as necrosis necrosis is due to due to deficiency of or you can write deficiency of what are the elements you can better you can directly or you try to remember because no need to write the complete point you just try to remember in shortcut form you just practice it it is because of we say uh, what we call nitrogen and potassium magnesium calcium and here you can take zinc so here directly you can write necrosis is due to nitrogen potassium magnesium calcium and zinc so these are the components which makes including copper that's what i'm thinking one more element is there that's nothing but copper so these all elements when they are not in sufficient quantity that causes uh, death of some of the parts of the tissue that process is called necrosis chlorosis most commonly we find necrosis most commonly find in case of leaves sometimes here and see there we can see brown color spots it's because of death of tissue over there and it's called necrosis necrosis is due to deficiency of these elements what are they nitrogen potassium magnesium calcium zinc and copper then then maybe sometimes it leads to inhibition of cell division inhibition of cell division that means you know growing parts apical meristem a uh, growing part of the plants like shoot apical meristem root apical meristem a uh, formation of lateral branches where to uh, to have to make the growth to happen to make the branch to grow to make the tip of the plant to grow you know that cells called apical meristem at the tip need to undergo cell division but due to deficiency of some elements there may be inhibition of cell division that means growth mechanism will stop which elements is due to nitrogen sulfur and uh, potassium molybdenum so these elements they make the breakdown of what cell division they will not if they are deficient in the plant cell division may not happen it inhibits cell division this is third one important then apart from this delay in flowering there may be delay in flowering so if you take the delay in flowering means the plant is produced it's grown but it is unable to give the flower it may take long duration of time to give flowering so that is called delay in flowering it may be due to deficiency symptoms of nitrogen sulfur molybdenum nitrogen sulfur and molybdenum not only this generally other deficiency symptoms if you take there may be uh, stunted growth so there may be stunted growth sometimes apart from this there may be premature falling off premature fall off in leaves and buds okay most common deficiency symptoms are chlorosis necrosis inhibition of cell division delay in flowering 
and along with that some elements commonly also lead to stunted growth in the plant. The plant may not grow to the maximum extent or sometimes it may lead to premature fall of leaves and buds most commonly. But these four you have to remember along with the elements. I repeat first one is chlorosis that is discoloration of chlorophyll. There is yellowing of leaves. It is due to deficiency of these elements. What are they? Nitrogen, sulphur, potassium, magnesium, manganese, zinc, calcium and iron. Necrosis is also the common deficiency symptom. It happens due to death of the tissue. It is due to deficiency of nitrogen, potassium, magnesium, calcium, zinc and copper. Maybe sometimes it leads to inhibition of cell division that may be due to nitrogen, sulphur, potassium and molybdenum. Delay in flowering that is nitrogen, sulphur, molybdenum these are very common along with that other common symptoms are just try to remember it may deficiency of some other elements most commonly they cause stunted growth or may be premature fall off in leaves and buds means before com complete formation of the flower bud itself it will fall off. Angulis they may not convert into complete leaf they will get fall off premature falling in leaves and buds. These are nothing but most common deficiency symptoms. Now if you take the um, some of the examples like sometimes the deficiency of some elements also lead, leads to some type of diseases. So for example let us take the diseases very very importantly if you take the zinc. So here I am writing the element on the top and what is the deficiency disease or what is the disease it causes. Deficiency of this element leads to causing of what disease. So here better you write down here deficient element. The element which is deficient leads to causing what type of disease very important. Zinc is the one which causes a molded leaf disease. Whenever there is a deficiency of zinc is there very important to remember zinc is the element if zinc is not present to the sufficient quantity it leads to what is called molded leaf disease right. Similarly copper if the plant is having deficiency of element copper then it leads to a disease called a dieback in citrus and it leads to a disease called a dieback in citrus. Try to understand these examples are very very important. In case the plant is having deficiency of the zinc, that leads to disease called mold and leaf disease. Remember very very important. Suppose if the plant is having deficiency of copper then that leads to dieback in citrus. Let us continue further. Let us talk about boron. If boron is deficient then it leads to hot rot disease hot rot disease in especially beetroot guys sometimes there is a question in the previous meet they asked about which element shows what type of disease uh, sometimes even we got questions make sure that you take white paper practice the elements along with the diseases right and apart from this let us continue further manganese is the one which causes whiptain in cauliflower Similarly, whenever there is a deficiency of chlorine in the plant that leads to bronzing in legumes and similarly you can take nickel and this causes mouse ear in pecan very very important you need to remember what are they manganese causes whiptail in cauliflower what element in which plant what is the name of the disease right chlorine whenever it is deficient not having required quantity then what happens bronzing in legumes legumes are most commonly affected by chlorine similarly if the plant shows deficiency of nickel that causes what mouse ear and pecans very very important the table what I wrote here it is very very important. So you have to write the element and deficiency of this element shows what type of disease very very important. Guys I repeat very important. Zinc shows molded leaf disease, copper, dieback in citrus, 
uh, boron hot rod in beetroot very important manganese whip tail in cauliflower chlorine bronzing in legumes and nickel mouse ear in pecan so this is nothing but a complete overall story called as uh, deficiency symptoms now what we have understood if the element is below critical concentration then it causes what are called deficiency symptoms suppose if the element is above critical concentration it causes what are called toxicity symptoms now deficiency symptoms are completed let us make a move on to toxicity symptoms right guys so what did i said the last point here what is toxicity symptom the concentration of an element if it is above critical concentration and causes 10% reduction in dry weight of tissue so what's the meaning of this what's the meaning of this guys here the concentration of an element if you look at what we say above critical concentration what is critical concentration that is a minimum required concentration of element above this concentration that means the element is present in excess quantity and that causes 10% reduction in dry weight of the tissue that means tissue is getting reduced in terms of its weight that may be the symptom of excess quantity of the element that is above critical concentration that itself leads to what is called toxicity symptom that itself leads to what are called toxicity symptoms now these toxicity symptoms i am writing ts ds means deficiency symptoms ts means toxicity symptoms toxic symptoms are difficult to trace are difficult to trace difficult to identify toxicity symptoms are very very difficult to identify but deficiency symptoms we can identify with the immediate morphological changes what i mean to say when element is below it causes deficiency symptoms deficiency symptoms can be easily identified because it causes immediate morphological changes but toxicity symptoms are very very difficult to identify or difficult to trace now here if you look at here uh, different parts of the plants different parts of the plant show a different toxicity symptoms due to same element due to same element one part suppose one element is showing toxicity symptom different parts of the plant they show different toxicity symptoms due to same element same as i told you deficiency symptom here element is same but in root it gives different uh, symptom in shoot it gives different symptom in flower it gives some different symptom now uh, sometimes toxicity symptoms are multiple symptoms means uh, what you call uh, excess quantity of the one element it leads to multiple symptoms what is toxicity excess quantity of an element what i'm trying to say excess q means quantity excess quantity of elements show uh, multiple symptoms excess quantity of elements are shown multiple symptoms maybe in multiple symptoms they may become the same symptoms they may be become same symptoms also shown by other elements also shown by other elements what's the meaning of this 
there may be some common symptoms shown between other elements and the excess element. I repeat again toxicity symptoms are multiple in symptoms meaning excess quantity of the elements are shown with multiple symptoms. It may show chlorosis, necrosis, inhibition of cell division, right. It may show many symptoms. In that some symptoms are common and also shown by other elements. For example, you know that potassium, right. Potassium shows what? All three, chlorosis, right, necrosis. And also it shows what inhibition of cell division. Yes or no? Sulfur, if you take sulfur, sulfur also shows what? Chlorosis. It also shows what? Inhibition of cell division. And also shows what? Delay in flowering. Delay in flowering. That means excess quantity of one element shows multiple symptoms if uh, excess of potassium shows chlorosis necrosis inhibition of cell division all three means multiple symptoms and they also become same symptoms also shown by other element if excess of sulfur is there even it also shows the same symptoms what are they chlorosis inhibition of cell division and also delay in flowers that means in multiple symptoms some symptoms are common uh, along with the toxic element along with the other elements that is the meaning of the statement. Now let us see some example for this. Now for example manganese excess manganese leads to toxicity symptoms leads to toxic. So whenever if you take the plant having excess concentration of manganese okay whenever the plant is having excess quantity of the manganese then that leads to toxic symptoms. What are toxic symptoms shown by manganese? Excess concentration of manganese causes formation of brown spots, formation of brown spots surrounded by chlorotic weeds surrounded by chlorotic weeds formation of brown spots surrounded by chlorotic weeds on the leaf you can see formation of brown color spots here and there so on the leaf you can see brown color spots surrounded by chlorotic veins this is a vein which vein also got discolored so this is a symptom of excess quantity of manganese leads to toxic symptom sometimes what happens man excess quantity of the manganese uh, inhibits or competes with iron and magnesium iron and magnesium excess quantity of the manganese competes with iron and magnesium and this especially they bind especially in binding in binding to enzymes okay manganese want to compete with iron it will compete with magnesium in binding to enzymes when iron want to go and combine with the enzyme manganese will come that no no i will combine so manganese excess manganese competes with iron and magnesium in binding to enzymes and not only this excess manganese uh, what you call inhibits calcium translocation in shoot apex calcium translocation in shoot apex what is the meaning of that so here one element is causing impact on other element that means when excess manganese is there it inhibits it will not allow calcium translocation in shoot apex what is translocation suppose calcium is here if calcium is here transportation for a long distance is called translocation so calcium may not get transported to shoot apex because it is being affected by manganese manganese will not allow calcium not to move to shoot apex it is it is inhibited 
मूवमेंट ऑफ कैल्शियम टू शूट इफेक्ट हु इज इनहिबिटेड हि मैंगनीज हु इज इनहिबिटेड हि मैंगनीज दैट मीन वॉट इज हैपनिंग हि द मैंगनीज इज अन विच इनफेक्ट विच कॉज इज एफेक्ट ऑन अदर एलिमेंट्स excess manganese induces effect on other elements which are the other elements which are the other elements now have a list which are the iron magnesium and calcium right what exactly meaning of this excess manganese it competes with iron and magnesium in binding to the enzymes it will not allow them to bind with enzymes it will not allow calcium to get translocated so what's the meaning of this excess amount of the manganese induces the effect on other elements so when it it will not allow other elements to take what happens here this causes deficiency symptoms i write here it causes what deficiency symptoms when iron is not absorbed when magnesium is not absorbed when calcium is not translocated it causes what is called deficiency symptoms that means here what is the final statement toxicity symptoms of manganese symptoms of manganese are actually the deficiency symptoms of other elements what are the deficiency symptoms of iron magnesium and calcium very very important statement what is the final conclusion here what is the final conclusion we see toxicity symptoms of manganese actually they are toxicity symptoms of manganese because what are the symptoms expressed here are not because excess manganese it's affecting these three elements they are actually the deficiency symptoms of iron calcium and magnesium because manganese is not allowing them to get absorbed into the plant mechanism manganese is not allowing iron to take manganese is not allowing magnesium to take uh, and this is not allowing calcium to take as a result what happens so excess manganese will not make them to absorb when these elements are not absorbed into the plant due to excess manganese that leads to deficiency symptoms deficiency symptoms of these elements due to excess concentration of manganese what the symptoms appears due to manganese are actually their deficiency symptoms of these elements and that we take it as toxicity symptoms of manganese so this is a good example for toxicity symptoms one element may induces the effect on other elements it's a good example for uh, what you call manganese is a good example for what we call toxicity symptoms